Chapter 48, The New Foot Mr. Beaver squinted at Roz's stump. I've never built a foot before. He stroked his whiskers and muttered to himself. There are really three problems to solve. The foot needs to grip the ground, and it needs to be durable. And then there's the issue of fixing it to the leg. I might have to consult a few friends. Will she ever walk again, said Bright Bill. What's that? Mr. Beaver was lost in thought. Oh, not to worry. You just sit back and leave everything to me. I love a challenge. Mr. Beaver plunked into the pond and returned a while later, rolling a large section of a tree trunk. Say hello to your new foot, he said, slapping the wood with his tail. Hello, new foot, said the robot. That's the spirit. This beauty is from one of the hardest trees I ever chewed. I just need to make a few modifications. Mr. Beaver placed the piece of wood next to Roz. He squinted, repositioned the piece, and squinted some more. With his claws, he marked different spots on the wood, and then he put his big chompers to work. The beaver chewed and gnawed and carved up that piece of wood, turning it over and over in his paws. Chit Chat looked down from a branch and chattered through the quiet moments. This reminds me of the time I saw a fox catch a lizard by the tail, and somehow the lizard's tail fell off and he got away, and later I saw the lizard got a new tail, and now Roz is going to get a new foot and everything will be fine. The wooden foot took shape, and before long Mr. Beaver was standing beside a beautiful carving that resembled a boot. He tried to slide it over Roz's stump but the opening was too small. He scrapped out more wood until it was a perfect fit. Very good, he said, spinning out a wood chip. My friends should be arriving any minute with the next few things we'll need. And there they are now. I'd like you to meet Bumpkin, Lumpkin, and Rumpkin, but I called them the Fuzzy Bandits. Three fat raccoons shuffled into the garden, dragging a tangle of vines behind them. "'Good day,' said Bumpkin. "'Good day,' said Lumpkin. "'Good day,' said Rumpkin. "'You might already know this, reader, "'but raccoons have very nimble hands, "'and the fuzzy bandits use theirs "'to skillfully tie those vines "'around the robot's leg "'and around her new foot. "'The vines caught nicely "'on all the dings and dents and scrapes. "'Once they were tied good and tight, "'Mr. Beaver threw back his head "'and hollered, "'Trunk tap! We could use your assistance!' There was silence, and then three quick taps echoed down from the forest canopy. "'Ah, that'll be him,' said Mr. Beaver, smiling. A very handsome woodpecker swooped into the garden. "'You called? Come, ca you called?' came the woodpecker's musical voice. "'Indeed I did. Everyone, this is my woodpecking pal.' Trunk tap. Now, Trunky, we need some tree resin, the really sticky stuff. Can you help us out? Of course I can, said the woodpecker. You've got a perfect pine tree right here. Trunk tap ho hopped over to a crusty old pine tree and pecked a few deep holes in the bark. Thick, syrupy resin began oozing down the trunk. Mr. Beaver scooped up handfuls of the resin and smeared it all over the wooden foot and the vines until everything was glistening with stickiness. And when the resin dried a short time later, Roz's foot was finished. This is wonderful, said the robot as she strolled around her garden. I am as good as new. Mr. Beaver and Trunk Tap and the Fuzzy Bandits went away feeling pretty happy with themselves. They'd done a very nice thing but it was the first wooden foot any of them had ever made, and within a week the vines were coming undone and the foot was sliding loose, so they returned, determined to get it right. They found even harder wood and even tougher vines. They experimented with resin, heating it by the fire, letting it boil and thicken until it became an indestructible glue. They kept tinkering with their design until finally... Roz had herself a wooden foot that she could rely on. Huzzah! Mr. Beaver wrapped his knuckles on the new and improved creation. I knew we'd get it right. Roz moved slower than before, 
and she had a slight limp, but she was back to her old self again, and that was a relief to everyone, especially Bright Bill. Chapter 49 The Flyer With coaching from his mother, Bright Bill was becoming a truly exceptional flyer. He wasn't the biggest or the strongest, but he was the smartest. You see, he and his mother had started studying the flying techniques of other birds. They'd sit for hours and watch how hawks and owls and sparrows and vultures move through the air. Then they'd go up to the grassy ridge and Bright Bill would practice what he'd learned. Soon he was diving and swooping and darting and soaring around the island. The adult geese frowned at his flying tricks, but the gooselings thought he was amazing. Each morning, a gaggle of them would wait on the water for Bright Bill to lead them into the sky. And then a few hours later, he'd re return home to Roz, shaking his tail feathers and honking about his latest airborne adventures. Mama, the other gooselings didn't know that warm air rises. So I found an updraft and we spent the afternoon circling around and around and hardly flapped our wings at all. Mama, did you see that lightning storm, storm today? We knew there was trouble when the wind started blowing from the north, so we flew down to some shrubs and waited for the storm to pass. Mama, we just tried to fly in we just tried to fly in formation. We all took turns at the point, but everyone liked following me the best, so I led most of the time. Chapter 50 The Button Bright Bill was thinking about the small button on the back of his mother's head. His mother was thinking about it too. They couldn't stop wondering what would happen if the button were pressed, and one day they decided it was time to find out. Roz sat on the floor of the nest. Her son nervously stood on a stone behind her. I am ready when you are, said the robot. Okay, said the gooseling. Here we go. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click! Roz's body relaxed. Her quiet whirring slowly stopped. Her eyes faded to black. Mama, can you hear me? There was no answer. Bright Bill waddled around and looked at his mother's face. Her strange spark of life had gone out. The gooseling had never felt more alone. He was ready to switch her back on. But what if she didn't wake up? What if she woke up different? The gooseling was afraid to press the button, and he was afraid not to press the button. Bright Bill took a deep breath. Click! Roz's body tensed. Her quiet whirring slowly started. Her eyes began to glow. Mama, can you hear me? Hello, I am Rosam, Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz. The robot spoke these words automatically in a language Bright Bill didn't understand. His little heart raced as his worst fears seemed to be coming true. But a moment later, her familiar voice returned, and the robot said in the language of the animals, Hello, son. How long was I out? It seemed like only an instant to me. You were out for a few minutes, said the gooseling, as he hugged his mother, but it seemed like forever to me.